there is a clear difference between black tie and formal. I'm gonna say it again. It's a clear difference between black tie and formal. Formal is a suit, black tie is a tuxedo. There you have it. Hey GQ, I'm Carlene Roy. I'm an event planner and this is The Breakdown. <laughs>
I'm looking at all the LED screens. Basically, it's like the brightest, biggest projection there is. I'm sure that they probably spent upwards of $200,000 just in sound and lighting. And also because there's so much power that's involved with this, they probably had to also get a few generators. You also need a generator when you have a lot of electricity going on because if you try to plug into the house system, you'll crash the whole system. For an event like this, I think it should take you at least 30 days to get it off the ground. We usually have a 14 day window to plan these very high profile, big budget events. If we get an event where we have 30 days to plan it, then it's like God has shined a light down on us. It's very rare that we get that much time. Most people who are that jet set celebrity type of industry, they don't care about time. They don't care about restrictions. That's why they hire people like us to get the job for them. They just want it done. And that just comes with the business with being an event planner. God, Nick, what are you worried about? You have to keep Rachel happy. She's just lucky to be here. Nice, Eddie. Oh, what? Because The Bachelor is from a rich, well-to-do, affluent family, I'm sure that they can't have no bad press that comes out about what he's doing in his personal life. I'm sure the event planner had to arrange some sort of non-disclosure agreements or confidentiality agreements so the debauchery and all the fun that was happening on the boat didn't get out or get leaked to the press. In addition to the confidentiality agreements, I'm sure everybody also had to sign a waiver. That means if you come on here and you bust your ass or if you fall overboard, we are not liable and this is all on you. So these are some of the things that you have to take into consideration if you are planning an event for someone that is high net worth or someone that's high profile. Most everyday people are not going through these extra precautions, but safety first is always our motto. So my overall assessment for the crazy rich Asians bachelor party is they probably paid $3 million. The most expensive event that we have ever planned was a anniversary event for a very rich man. I think we spent anywhere from 20 to $25 million. Everybody flew private, everybody sailing on yachts, and also we had a private concert one night and we actually built a skating ring in the middle of a sand desert. That's your budget right there. Next up, The Great Gatsby. The whole city packed into automobiles and all weekend, every weekend. The pull up is crazy. But what you don't see in this scene right here are valet attendants. So you see all these dope cars, all these people, all this commotion, that has to be organized. You want tons and tons of valet attendants because you don't want these people waiting. So you wanna make sure that you overstaff at an event like this. At a house party, you will probably find a location that's less than a mile away, hopefully closer than that, that has some sort of big lot or big area where you can park all the cars. Must have valet at a party like this. If the party is playing right, it'll be very difficult for an unwanted guest or a party crasher to enter a party like this. At most house parties at big lavish houses, something like what's in this movie, you will have several checkpoints. If you ain't even on the list, you wouldn't even be able to approach the actual house. I see party crashers all the time. You name it, I've seen it. I've seen people scale buildings. I've seen people jump over brick walls. I've seen people pop outside of a trunk. But guess what, they can do all that extra they want if they get to the front and they're not on the list they're not getting in before I became an event planner I worked for Diddy to help him curate the guest list and that takes some finesse that takes knowing how to wrangle the right people in the room a good party you want a mix of personalities you want a mix of guests film stars Broadway directors morality protectors high school defectors and Ewing Klipsbringer dubious descendant of Beethoven <laughs> That's what you need. That is the variety and diversity that makes a party dope. The guest list and having the right people in the room is key. When I worked for Diddy, and of course because he is who he is, all these people he had on speed dial and in his phone, I would be inviting these superstars, texting them, emailing them directly. Nowadays, the organizer is probably working with a talent wrangler or the publicist or the manager of talent. <laughs> When you 
are planning a party in someone's home, you take a lot more care into it because it is actually their house. So you are taking a lot more precaution with how you move the furniture. You actually are inventory and everything. Like the couch was here in room A. The vase was here in room B. So you really are handling things with a fine tooth comb. You always want entertainment at a party like this. It just keeps more things visually for the eyes to see when they're in the room. So dancers like this, the costume, the makeup, let's say for maybe 10 or so dancers, that probably was anywhere from 20 to $25,000 just for dancers. And the dancers usually work on a two hour set. I love the lighting in this film because it feels very grand. And whenever you have an event, the lighting has to be perfect because the lighting changes the mood. A good event planner knows how to change the mood throughout the evening. And also, once you invest a lot of money into your event, the food, the decor, all the elements, you don't want the party so dark where your guests actually can't see what is happening in the venue. I think your lighting line item will probably run you anywhere from $100,000 to $200,000 modern time. Alone and a little embarrassed, I decided to get roaring drunk. One thing I like about this film is that there is a surplus of staff. You see a million people pouring champagne, you see a million people with hors d'oeuvres, and that is just called over hosting your guests. You never want your guests to wait. You never want to feel like, when is the next meatballs coming by? Like, you want to always keep the food, always want to keep the drinks going. Carrying inheritances on Gatsby's Beach. I just want everybody to look at how much they are drinking. They are spending a load amount of money on just food and beverage, and that is the one of the most expensive line items for any event, any party. Once you pay for the venue, the most expensive thing is always your catering. Catering can be hundreds of thousands of dollars, especially for an event at this scale. And knowing Gatsby, they wasn't drinking no whale drinks. They are drinking the finest top shelf liquor there is, and that also is always the most expensive liquor package you have. And this is open bar. Keep in mind, this takes place in the 20s, but a catering and bar line item these days for what they're doing is probably at least $200,000. smile was one of those rare smiles. That the fireworks have to be scheduled in advance. For most cities, you have to schedule your fireworks or get your firework permit at least seven days in advance. Not like you go in a party city and just getting some fireworks. Like these are like real deal professional fireworks that have to be launched by a professional. For novelty splash things like this, I think short and quick is the best way to do it. I would say a fireworks show like this probably costs you anywhere from fifteen dollars to $25,000. Again, this party took place in the 20s, so I would say in today's time, they probably spent around $5 million to pull this off. Next up, Step Brothers. You guys seem to be hitting it off. Oh, honey, oh my God, this is the greatest party. Way to go. For an event like this, especially like a wine mixer, you don't have to do much. Just let the scenery and the vibe speak for itself. Like the grounds is beautiful, the sun is beautiful, like that is the scene already. Hey, how are you? Catalina Wine Mixer. The purpose of a wine mixer is to educate yourself on the different wines in a more festive setting. So you're there to try probably flights of wine, and a flight of wine is basically a sample of a bunch of different wines. I like this party because it's low fuss. You don't have to do a lot of work. So if you notice from the setup, it's very simple. They have six foot tables, high boys, picnic wicker type, you know, soft furniture. So it's not a lot of bells and whistles that goes on with this. It's very nice to see you, Robert. I think, I think Brennan organized this whole thing to get us back together. You also notice at this type of event, the music is low enough where people actually can talk and have a conversation. So you never want the music too loud at this type of event where it's so loud that you can't hear what people are saying.
If you are ever trying to save money, a beer and wine package is the way to go because it is the most economical bar package that you could have at any event. Let's say at an event for 150 to 200 people, a beer and wine package would probably cost you about $84 per person, whereas an open bar top shelf type of event would cost you $200, $250 per person. Guys. This is supposed to be jicama, not bok choy. Sorry, folks. You will see the style of how the food is served is way casual. So it looks like it's buffet style, where they have servers actually serving the food in the buffet line to guests. The guests then take their plate and go sit at their tables, and it's no assigned seating. You sit where you want. Like, this is a very low fuss, low brow type of way to serve food to your guests. A buffet is always gonna be cheaper than a plated formal meal. Hey Brandon. Good to see you Dale. Thanks for hiring our Canyon company. Easy decision. You guys have an outstanding track record. Ah. Don't get fooled. Every catering company and every chef is not the same. You want to work with a catering company that is tried and true and that is a line item that you don't want to skimp on. So make sure that you are vetting who your caterer is. Very rarely will I hire a caterer that I never work with for a big event. I would probably test them out on a small event first to see how they show up and how they produce and if they pass the test for the small event, maybe I'll give them another chance to do a bigger event with us. Uptown Girl, we are California's preeminent 1980s Billy Joel cover band. Cover bands are the worst. I don't know why people hire cover bands. Like, it's just like the epitome of like cheesy wedding. It's a no for me. If there was a fight between a guest and a higher staff, I would try to handle it as discreet as possible because you never want to make a scene and you never want the guest to see you sweat. Would defuse the situation, maybe pull them to the side, and whoever is at fault, that person got to go, and that is when security steps in. You cost me money. So this isn't even a judgment call, man. You're Audi 5000, my friend. Derek, can't we talk about this? Hey. Is everything okay? No. You just fired me. An event planner wouldn't be fired on the spot for something like this because the event planner still needs to see the event through, like get through the rest of the event. But I highly doubt if that client will hire them again. Okay, here's the thought. I see an empty stage. I see drums. I see a drummer. I see a microphone. And I see a singer. Dad, come on. What? We gave that stuff up. Yeah. Crisis happen in live events all the time. That's nothing new. But one thing I would never do as an event planner is solicit another guest to step in as an entertainment because the band just up and left for whatever reason. What I would do in this scenario is take my phone, go to wherever the little control area is for the music, and play some sort of playlist anything so that there is not dead silence and that the party could continue to go and the guests don't know anything about it. There is nothing worse than if you're at a party and you're dancing and having a good time and then the music says, it's like the worst thing that could ever happen. I have been in events where the music has went out. We did Offset's birthday party in LA last year and the music went out and I saw Offset jump over a million people to get to the DJ booth and ask the DJ what the hell is going on. I've had events where the band was so terrible that I have literally had to pull the plug like, yo, y'all's time is a wrap. So things with the music and hiccups, like that happens all the time. That is why you have a sound check to make sure that the transition is always cool. And that's why you have plenty of generators to to make sure that ain't no power issues. So you only see ice breaking or glass breaking in movies, but it's something that actually happens. If the music is so robust, if it's so strong, it in actuality will break the glass and that is where your damage fee come in and that's where having good insurance comes in because you just clean it up and you keep going about your business. We were doing an event with Quavo from Migos and there was one scene um, at the event where we had glasses on the shelf and as we were running through the rehearsal for the event, and doing the sound check, the music was so robust, it was so strong that it broke 
all the damn glass. It came shattering to the ground. We had a few hours before doors out open, but in the end, we replaced it and it all worked out. My final thoughts on this Catalina wine mixer is they probably spent anywhere from $150,000 to $200,000. Next up, Ocean's 8. This is spot on for the Met Gala. And shout out to whoever organized this because I'm sure they had to get the blessing of Vogue, the Met, the city to recreate this whole iconic scene, which is such a cultural moment in Hollywood. So the way they did this, chef's kiss. That is the press pit. So that's where all your paparazzi is. That's where you have people doing commentary for media outlets. Also like this, because you are press and paparazzi, there's a dress code for you as well. So you will notice that all of the photographers are in black tie, as well as the people who are interviewing the celebrities as they come up the steps. So you just can't pull up because you have on a tuxedo and a camera. They have to come with their own clothes. They have to have their own tuxedo. It's nothing that the Met Gala is dressing them for. They ain't the celebrity, okay? Your name? Uh, Hinder Schneider. Oh, here it is. Have a good night. Thank you. Me for it. Now this part to me is not realistic. Okay, if this is a general check-in list, the check-in would have happened outside of the tent or outside the entrance. You don't want to give party crashers or people who are not invited the opportunity to even step foot inside the party if they don't want to be there. So I'm assuming because the Met Gala is so on point that this is probably the second or third check-in before talent goes up the famous steps. Next we have Serena Williams. How are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm good, thank you. So you've conquered the court, you've conquered motherhood. Thanks. For a red carpet event, there is some coordination that goes involved with it. If there's a budget, you usually are sending a car for the talent to come. You're arranging with them how many people are in their party. Or are they coming with security? Is security allowed inside? For the Met Gala, it doesn't look like they allow talent to come with security, which most big celebrity events don't allow because you have so much damn security there. They spend a million dollars on security probably. So wrangling talent and having talent arrive at a red carpet is definitely a science. So for just any run of the mill red carpet event, they show up when they show up. They get a notice, this is the time that the red carpet opens, this is the time that the red carpet closes. If they want their photo taken, they gonna show up between that window. For something as orchestrated as the Met Gala, I'm sure that they give a notice to the talent in advance of a window of time. Kim Kardashian, you need to arrive between 7 and 7.15 so that it's not so jumbled on the carpet. Here, here, here. Hedges have to be custom, and when I say custom, because the hedges have to go along the vibe of the steps or the shape of the actual steps. And that cream carpet that you see, that carpet is not there every day. So that carpet has to be cut, it has to be laid, it has to be installed, it has to be broken down. And right before the guests come, you see the people vacuuming the carpet to make sure that there's not a spot on it. So the outside entry along carpet, hedging, tinting, the velvet drapes, we probably looking at, and the lighting, probably $300,000 or more. You will see that the lighting mood has changed already. We do events in phases or in stories, like story A, story B. For the arrivals, it was very bright. You saw spotlights because people are getting their photos taken. And now you can see which looks like phase B. It's a bit more moodier because they're probably setting the scene for what is happening next, dinner or performance. So this looks like your standard reception style or dinner style setup area. You would notice that you have small florals on each table. You want the florals either small and low or high and skinny and that is because you want to be able to see the people that you actually are talking to as you are eating dinner. For florals such as this, they're not over the top, they're not too crazy, it's just florals and some tea lights. 
that probably is like 150 to 200 dollars a table just on that small white floral arrangement they probably work with the fine china vendor to get them the china settings and that can run you let's say for a 200 person dinner probably seventeen thousand dollars in china alone The Met Gala is dope for two reasons. One, it's just such a beloved sacred event. Second, because it's in the Metropolitan Museum of Art. So it means you have so much high quality, high priced, precious art there. So the art in conjunction with the fashion that is the theme for that year's event. I mean, the security around not touching all of that stuff alone is like, I can't even wrap my head around it. Most security guards cost anywhere from 50 to $65 an hour. And looking at the security guards that they have for this event, I'm sure they blew the budget on security. And they also have put in place subtle security measures so that you also can like see the art and see the beauty of the garments, but also it's not like a construction like don't touch sign. So it's a way more chic way to protect the art and the garments. Hi everybody. Hi. How are you? Hi. Hi. Good to see you. It's so good to see you. You look amazing. The Met Gala is known for being like so pristine and the secrecy of like what's happening in the inside. If you don't get invited, then you just don't get invited. So there are a few security measures that you can put in place so that your event is not Photograph for people who doesn't need to see if you can do a phone check-in they'll walk through a metal detector So it's not like they can hide it and then they will have to give their phone You put it in a lock sleeve and that they put it almost like in a cubby or a locker You also can put up wide notices around that says like please no photography No posting during this time for something like this I would assume that's what they do here because it'll be pretty hard to get these celebs in the world of Instagram not on their phone. Also, the Met Gala is so gangster and people want to get invited again. I'm sure they're not going to try to like sneak photos because they want that invitation. I'm guessing for a fancy high class event like this that the tables for eight guests probably run you about $300,000. All in all, Ocean's 8 Met Gala budget, I think we're looking at about $3 million. Next up, Spectre. This is very much about the city, the vibe, the energy, and just community and culture. To do an event like this or to hold an outside festival like this, you have to get permits for the street, you have to get permits for the sidewalks, and all of this has to be organized through the mayor's office. So you would work with the events department to get the proper permits. This scene takes place in Mexico City, but in the US, specifically New York City, a permit would probably cost you around $1,000 a day. I actually think that this movie inspired Mexico City to create an actual Day of the Dead celebration because it was just like such a frenzy around this scene in the movie. I have personally never made a float, but I do know that there are fabricators. Fabricator is someone who can custom build custom create things. Looking at this and just the scale and intricacy of it, this looks like it probably costs at least $30,000 to create this. And most floats are housed in like a warehouse and it's a whole storage situation that goes into it. There is a few mechanics that goes probably into the cost. What the real cost in this type of parade is crowd control, security, restrooms and cleanup. That is where the bulk of the money is going. So the city is not paying for the lavish costumes or the makeup and all that. People are paying for that on their own. Again, the key thing with any type of mass gathering is permits and crowd control. I cannot stress that enough. Safety is first. You want to make sure that there is a clear plan to get people in and out areas of egress. So you would work with your security and you would probably work with the local precinct to make sure that those measures are in place. In this scene, you see them going down this massive street, but you also see looks like buildings or residencies or companies 
on both sides. Tenants that are occupying those businesses, they need to be working in concert with the police and the security department. So they're probably going to be closed for business because I don't know how much they want to be involved with the frenzy, but they need to be on board with what's happening in the community and the vicinity as well. Also, anytime there's a festival or a parade or something big like this happening in town, best believe that whatever the neighboring hotels are, they are upcharging for those days. Probably double the price for hot ticket weeks like this. Next up, office Christmas party. This looks like a tragedy like I would never want to plan an event like this um a mess clearly there is no event planner for this party they definitely ain't call me to do nothing like this we do have some corporate clients we work with Netflix we work with YouTube we work with Google and they never have Christmas parties like this thank God keep going It didn't look like they spent a lot of money on this event, but looking at this ice slide contraption and this ice sculpture, I think that's where the bulk of their money went. And an ice sculpture, something like that, probably cost them around $5,000 if I had to guess. I've seen ice luge before, and it seems like the most unsanitary thing in life. I don't know why people want to participate in it. Like, please, somebody tell me. I think ice sculptures, ice anything is so dated, just period. Let me just say that. But you definitely can bring in an ice sculpture to any type of building, any type of venue. Most ice sculptures come with some sort of like bin to catch the actual water that's leaking from it so that it doesn't spread throughout the event venues. One thing to keep in mind with ice sculptures, the heavier it is, you need to get clearance for the actual building to make sure that it's strong enough to actually hold it. We do tons of parties with rappers and we did one event with Offset from Migos and he wanted to have a Bentley truck ice sculpture. This ice sculpture, it was actually the same weight as an elephant and we had to get clearance from the venue to actually bring it in. It was a whole situation. It wasn't too crazy, but it was a few thousand dollars. The ice slide in this scene is probably the craziest thing I've ever seen. I'm sure that they have some sort of contraption or situation to actually catch the actual water that was melting from the slide. Because I'm sure with them drinking and being drunk and sliding on an ice slide, that is water all over the place. Like That is like damage one-on-one. There is really no way to calculate damages for a party to the nose, but a good event planner knows to have a 10% contingency line item. Your contingency line item is for overages, extras that come up that you may not know of, and then also it's to cover any damages, anything that happened at the event that was unforeseen. So always budget in a 10% contingency line item so that you cover all of these costs and you don't have to go back to your client to ask them for more money. Damages can be anything from cigarette burn to tearing up a floor, from nail polish being poured on a Persian rug, you name it, I have seen the damages. And guess what? That's just the cost that we're gonna have to eat and pay for at the end of the event. There are levels to having a photo booth at your event. It can go from as cheap as $500 to upwards of $10,000. In the days of Instagram, everybody wants to outdo everybody with their photo booth activation. But you can see in this scene, they have a very generic photo booth. This probably costs you around $800, $900 for a party. Overall, with this party, I think they spent no more than $50,000. Next up, meet Joe Black. This looks like the ideal venue because it looks like it's already an amazing structure. You see, it looks like the lights already live there, the great sprawling lawn, like those things are already there. So those are elements that you don't have 
to pay for it. So if you can find a venue that already has a panache with it, it's less work that you have to do to design it out as an event planner. Outside events are completely beautiful, but you always have to keep the weather in mind. A good event planner always has a rain plan in place. So if you're looking for an outside venue, you wanna make sure that it is transitional. Should it be rain or should it be cold at night? Does this event location lend me putting up a tent or having tons of people with umbrellas. Like these are things you should be looking at or thinking about in the back of your mind. And also as the event planner, you're gonna be checking the weather that week like crazy. And the call or the best practice for calling if you're going to transition to your rain plan is usually 24 hours in advance is when you say, we're doing our rain plan or not. You need 24 hours because you actually wanna give ample time to get the tents loaded and get them to the venue and so that they can be erected in time. I thought I was gonna sneak away tonight. This style event is what we would call like gala style or banquet style. You see very traditional round tables. Everybody is dressed up. You have a big band on the stage. Someone is giving remarks. This style is something that is tried and true and very classic. Nailing the style of the event is the first thing that you wanna get as a client when you are working with somebody. I am the queen of a dress code because if somebody come in and their outfit is not right, they got to go. There is a clear difference between black tie and formal. I'm gonna say it again. It's a clear difference between black tie and formal. Formal is a suit, black tie is a tuxedo. There you have it. Formal is a long dress for a woman. Maybe it doesn't have all the embellishments and bells and whistles. And black tie is more gown and style, more embellishments, more bells and whistles, more jazzy, more razzle dazzle. This is quintessentially a black tie event. The gentlemen have on tuxedos and the women have on long gowns. Your security needs to know that like anybody not within the dress code, they can't get in. There's a time and a place for everything. So with the music in particular at a black tie event like this, you don't wanna turn up too easy. You kinda wanna ease your way into it. So maybe the music is a bit softer, you know, a bit more chill. If the night increases, then it's when you really have people rocking on the dance floor. Though I think the bones of this venue was already existing, like it already lived there before they got there, I do think this gazebo structure was actually built and designed in mind with the spirit of the venue, because it kind of looks like it already goes, but we know that they built this out for this birthday party. There's a few things that goes into having a live band. So this is a big band. It probably looks like at least 30 people. So you have to pay one for all the back line, all the extra equipment and sound that a band actually needs to perform live. So the back line plus the actual cost of the band for this alone, that probably was close to, I would say like maybe $50,000. Not all cakes are real cakes. So a lot of times event planners will get a faux cake made, which is a fake cake and the cake has nothing in it. This cake in particular, 100% is a faux cake. The top tier is probably real and that's where they put the candle in. You blow in the candle, you take it away. But meanwhile, behind the scenes, you have a sheet cake that's already cut up in squares and ready to go to be served to the guests. Your face I see is a memory. It may not be a perfectly perfect memory. Uh, sometimes we had her ups and downs. One thing that this gentleman did really well is that he addressed the crowd during the event. If people are getting dressed up, if people are traveling in town, good manners is that the host will always give remarks thanking the crowd for attending their birthday party. So bravo for him for doing this. <laughs> 
This event was a bit more formal. From what we see, they not turn it up too much. It's not so crazy. They already have a beautiful venue. I would think that they spent no more than $750,000 on this party. All in all, these movies that we saw today, I think that they were spot on. Nothing seemed too crazy or over the top that I have never experienced myself as an event planner. And my number one rule, I would say what makes a party a party is the energy and the spirit of the people in the room. You can be at the world's classiest event during the Cannes Film Festival, or you can be at a dive bar in the Lower East Side. But now, you know, we've had to make some pivots and some changes so we can still gather but now you have to gather in small groups and we have to just take a bit more extra precaution some things that event planners are doing now is you're having a COVID officer on site someone to take temperatures someone that can do rapid testing you know before you used to tell people to like get dressed up and this is the dress code so now we're actually helping them with the dress code like we're gonna create some very fly masks for you and let's make your mask go with your outfit setting up sanitation sanitation stations around your location or your venue. So there are smart ways to host a small group of people, but keep safety and precaution and social distance in mind. We don't want to miss out on life's milestones during this moment, but we also want to be smart about it. GQ, I had the best time hanging out with y'all today watching these movie clips. So until next time.